Hello and welcome back friends to another episode of Lynch Paints. Well, in this video I, Lynch, will be showing you all how to paint uh, yellow armour for all your orcs, for your bad moons, uh, for any kind of plan that you've got going on and uh, essentially just that, how to paint a dirty, grimy, horrible, messed up yellow colour effect. So, let's grab our paint and paintbrushes and let's jump straight into it. But of course, in order to paint such a model, we will need a variety of paints, and these are the ones I've used in the video today. Alongside which, I use a purple and a blue for glazing, for the tips of weapon barrels, which is entirely um, optional, really. Uh, so for the paint brushes, I have a medium-sized brush. A smaller medium-sized brush. A large fluffy brush. A smaller fluffy brush. And a teeny we need teeny tiny brush for those teeny tiny places. So today I'm painting something rather special. So it's going to be a grot uh, sort of boss for my lovely friend Jules Gill over at Live and Let's Dice. And yeah, this, this is going to be really fun. So this this will come off for now. Also mainly for like uh, postage purposes as well. And this can articulate as well, which is quite nifty. So I'm going to kick it off obviously with a black acrylic primer and then the next step we are going to want to go ahead with some of this I'm Warrior base. And we want a nice fluffy brush like a official dry brush brush or a old makeup brush whatever floats your boat really whatever you have to hand I mean obviously like these are far cheaper. So I'm just going to kick off with yeah, pretty much just dry brushing over the entire model for now. Uh, and we will revisit the armor work afterwards. So now that the main part of the dry brushing is done, we're just going to grab a little bit of this lovely grey night steel. Um, it's just a nice brighter sort of metal colour that we can use and then using the same brush as before, I'm just going to just go over just to sort of highlight where we have previously dry brushed. And again, um, just as a little tip, when you're dry brushing metal work in lots of metallic areas, the brighter it is, the easier it is to apply washes over the top because if it's somewhere like, uh, say, this here, where it's predominantly really, really dark, if you put a wash over the top of that, it's not going to show up very well. So the areas that you want sort of more weathered, uh, paint them brighter. So now we're ready to move over to our washes. So we're going to grab some lovely Agrax Earthshade and I'm going to want a nice some medium sized brush. It's going to wet it first. Get a big old blob. And then we're just going to pick out just whichever areas we would like to be weathered. So I'm going to pick out like this missile probably the, bat, um, the main cannon, two cannons on there, and like the exhaust vents and just kind of, just little bits really. Um, this, this part is entirely up to you how worn and weathered looking you want your looted vehicles to be. So now that the wash is dry, what we're going to do is that we're going to look at the armour panels. Um, so if you've seen my previous video before about um, 
painting orc armor. That's exactly what we're going to do today. And if you haven't, that's fine. I'm going to show you uh, right now. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to paint the armor as a uh, Imperial Fist. But what I want to do is I want to build up from, a, from an orange up to a yellow. Purely because the orange is, is a much darker color and then we can build on that rather than having to snap on several layers of yellow. So I've just picked two um, two paints here, just, just a yellow and a red. If you already have an orange, that's fantastic, just dive right in with that. Um, but if you're like me and don't, just, just make your own really. Um, so, we are going to just move that arm out of the way. We're going to start by just stippling the colour on. And then what that will do is that will give the impression that we've already painted it yellow. And then gone back over it and applied the, the weathering. But we're doing it in reverse. And it has worked before with um, of the blue and red armour before but I haven't done yellow so I will give it a go and then we'll see how it turns out. So that's the first layer done and what we can do now is that we can just start introducing more and more yellow into our mixture until we have the the right shade of yellow that we're after. If of course you have a small brush, um, so not brush, a small sponge, um, you can use that to achieve the same sort of effect that we're doing here. Um, if you don't want to just continuously poke and prod with a brush, you can poke and prod with a sponge if you like. Right, so now that we're finished with the yellow armor, what we're going to do now, we're just going to grab some other colors. So I'm just going to grab a different red. I'm just going to grab this Mephiston red. Um, I might grab some blues perhaps as well. And what we're going to do, we're just going to pick out just a couple of the um, accessories really. So like these um, additional bits on here. Um, maybe that's an explosion symbol over there on the bomb. Just kind of little areas just to add in a little bit more um, variety of color to the model. So for this, uh, grab the appropriate size brush. So I'm just going to grab this medium sized brush and the red. And we're just going to start out with just adding a little bit more color to it. So I've added in a few extra colors just to make it a little bit more vibrant. So got a couple of blues there, got the, um, the yellow, obviously, <laughs> got the red, um, and I've added in a little bit of white onto this one over here. So now we are going to move over onto another weathering element. So we're gonna look at the rust. So we're gonna want some of this riser rust, and we're gonna want a really knackered tired old frayed brush like this one here. and. We're just going to get a good blob onto our brush. And the less of this you use, obviously the, the kind of the um, finer the rust will look. Um, and obviously like the more you use, the more intense and fresh it's going to look. So I'll give you a couple of examples. So like, it's not quite that sort of intense. So kind of wipes a bit off onto my bit of 
paper that I've got a little bit just on the edge of my brush here. I'm just going to just pink a bit on. Plink, even. And yeah, so you can see the differences there. Um, it doesn't take that long to dry. And again, with this, with like uh, all the other kind of weathering techniques, you it's entirely up to you how much you want to apply on, what sort of effects you're going to go for, um, and really just have fun with it. That's that's the most important thing with it, is have fun, because that's why we do all these crazy, insane orc conversions at the end of the day. So now that we've messed around with the rust effect, one paint that pairs really, really well with it is this oxide. I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce that. Um, it's it's a, a copper oxide wash, is effectively what it is. Um, so we're going to just get a little bit of this, and then with a little fine detail brush, we are going to just pick out more like the rivets. So we're going to go just around and then draw a little bit down. Like that. Um, can't quite make it out there because I have just thinned it down with just a little bit of water because um, it is quite strong when it dries. So depending on how worn or fresh the weathering uh, you want to sort of look, then you can always just add in some some water just to thin it down wait until it dries see how it looks and then if it's not as um, intense as you wanted it you can always just add in just pure um, paint So right before we carry on with the final details on the model, like uh, any sort of weather effects on the weaponry, we're going to look at the grot. So I'm going to start out with this uh, Lauren Forest as our first initial layer on his skin. Uh, there's lots of different ways of painting grots, um, and well, orcs in general, uh, but this one is the one that I personally use. So we're going to start out with this Lauren Forest, uh, and then we will slowly introduce uh, where is it? There it is. Um, Orc Flesh. Which is a fantastic colour. Um, and again, just like with um, any kind of blending and such, you just work up and up in smaller and smaller areas um, until you're effectively highlighting with the uh, with the Orc Flesh paint colour. Um, luckily he's got this big chunky mask on, so there's not... Um, not much area of the skin to paint so this shouldn't be too long for you guys painting along at home or just watching but of course if you're watching that it's fantastic because I will speed this process up and then show you what it is at the end in just about a couple of minutes So he's pretty much finished. Um, I've done the skin colour, just going to zoom in just a little bit there. Um, added in a slight sort of soft pink just along the knuckles and just on the inside of the ears and I gave him some little orky teeth painted just onto his helmet just to give him a little bit of character. Um, went over the ends of the weapons as well, this is the barrels there. And the same with the big cannon up at the top. Um, just a simple case of um, so either wet blending, like I have done with these two weapons um, on the side here, purple, and then blue over the top, 
or you can try dry brushing which is what I did on the main cannon there and the side cannon as well and they, they turn out very similar um, so all that's left to do now is to do the base so I'm gonna cut to the the base just like squeeze through it and just dry brush the crap out of it and uh, yeah after that we'll kind of wrap up from there and here we are at the end of the video so this is how I would go about painting orc armor in yellow for all your bad moon players out there um, and this this has been truly uh, really really fun to build uh, and, and to paint to put together and it's going to look fantastic over at Live and Let's Die. So if you want to go check them out, there'll be a link to their channel in the description down below. Uh, this is going to my good friend Jules uh, to, uh, to join his uh, Grot Revolution army. So I'm really, really, really looking forward to, to seeing that when it comes out, probably in the next month or so, um, depending on their rather busy schedule. And in the meantime, there'll be reels and stills and such like over on my Instagram page at Lynch Paints. If you want to go follow me over there, that'd be amazing. And if you're new to the channel, then any support, a like and a subscribe will be hugely appreciated. And it only takes a couple of seconds and the buttons are already there. You know, they're, they're right there. Just, just prod them. Just poke it. Do it. Make me happy. Um, and if you wanted to pick up the components with the parts and the kits that I kind of use today so um, as you've got the Dureo Dreadnought in there there's um, part of a I want to say a Death Dread or a Killer I think no it's a Killer Canclaw um, oh and there's some Death Dread elements in there as well um, and all those other kind of orky goodness then there is a link to my affiliate link for Wayland Games in the description down below they stock a wide range a uh, wide range a wide range and variety of board games, card games, everything you need, all your hobby accessories as well. And following the link down below, a little bit goes towards me, and that is absolutely amazing. Um, so I do hope that you're all having a beautiful day, evening, morning, night, wherever you are in the world. Uh, and remember, folks, stay safe, stay beautiful, and we'll see you next time.